Good morning and welcome back um, to the readings of The Projection of the Astral Body by Sylvan Muldoon and Hereward Carrington. Um, today we're continuing um, on page 133 which is Not Dead But Sleeping. Um, thank you once again for joining me um, and enjoying the readings alongside me. Um, if you could like the video um, and if you could subscribe I'd be really grateful. Um, but thank you for, for listening. Not dead, but sleeping. There are, of course, exceptions to all rules, but in following the usual course of life, we depend upon the general trend and not upon the exceptional, and although the subconscious, during a projection, almost invariable carries itself with the omnipotent dignity, there is always the possibility of some complication. The controlling intelligence may take may make occasional mistakes but when it does so it is because of some foreign influence so if there are recorded cases of mediums having met with an unfortunate result or even death it is because of the exceptional cora l v richmond is said to have remained projected in the astral for many days hamid bey the youngest of egyptian fakirs whose marvellous demonstrations of the power of the mind over the body have startled the western world has undertaken several prolonged public burials he remained buried an hour in atlanta three hours in englewood seven hours in san diego etc without any coffin having been placed directly into the ground with the earth covering his face and body in the presence of sceptical newspaper men Accounts of these burials were published in the press at the time and are available to any interested reader. Although these performances may strike the average spectator as almost unbelievable, such demonstrations are by no means uncommon in the Orient, and hundreds of similar cases have been reported by travellers returning from India, Egypt and other eastern countries. Many of these burials were under excellent conditions, the whole procedure being controlled by sceptical witnesses. Some years ago, a celebrated fakir from the province of Lahore, India, was buried for a period of 30 days under the supervision of Prince Ranjit Singh and Sir Claude Wade. The fakir was placed in a sack after entering the state of catalepsy, which was securely tied. This sack was then placed in a box, which was locked the keys being kept by the British general. The box was then dis deposited in a brick vault, the door of which was sealed with Ranjit Singh's seal, and a guard of British soldiers was detailed to guard the vault day and night. At the end of the 30 days, the vault was open, the box and sack unfastened, and the fakir was very emaciated but still alive, was, was resuscitated by his friends. <clears throat> If projection of this type were not fully governed by an all-knowing intelligence, the body would surely have been neglected, and should the unusual intervene, i.e. should the astral body not be pulled back within cord activity range from time to time, to recharge the physical death would have been the natural consequence. It is obvious that, during an extensive and prolonged projection, the material counterpart might assume the characteristics of a corpse and the temperature drop exceedingly low, even to such an extent that the misunderstanding people of the world would pronounce the subject dead. I have concluded, as the result of a study of this subject, that the heart may actually cease beating for some time, and yet the astral cord may not be disconnected. Naturally, this condition could not exist long before the cord would snap. In a recent press article, the head of the American Medical Association stated that resuscitation is sometimes possible after four, four, sorry, after four hours of apparent death. Mr. Carrington has written several books on death and has summarised many cases of premature burial. There can be no doubt, says this authority, that many hundreds of persons have been buried alive during the centuries which have preceded us. Societies for the prevention of premature burial have actually been formed in England, America, etc. Cases of trance, catalepsy, suspended animation, etc. were mistaken for death before our more modern methods of diagnosis were introduced. And of course, that's come on leaps of bounds now. Um, 
<clears throat> this book is is very old so uh please don't let that bother your brain uh, and overthink too much about that because things have moved on a great deal okay <clears throat> Historic accounts and the statements of returning spirits, if this testimony may have been may be accepted as probable, seem to indicate that the astral line of force severs more rapidly at death with some individuals than others. It is probable that we exercise too much haste in soliciting the services of the undertaker when someone is pronounced dead and, as the saying goes, not allowing the corpse to get cold. There are many records of people who have been pronounced dead and returning to life, and there is always such a possibility if the astral cable be still intact, even though it is, it will, it is exceptional. Exteriorization might be enduring, the physical appear cadaverous, and the embalmer might have completed his work before the termination of a prolonged projection. In one book, which has the endorsement of prominent spiritualists, a spirit claims to have been earthbound and related that he was held in this condition because a mere thread was holding him to the physical counterpart for many months after the burial. How much truth there may be in this account, I do not know. In the Bible, there are several accounts of individuals who were brought back to life. Take, for example, Christ's re resurrection of his friend Lazarus. If Lazarus were actually dead and the astral cable disconnected, then Christ did perform a miracle. But if the cable was still engaged, it was an apparent miracle and the resurrection was merely a resuscitation. Christ was a marvellous occultist and seer, the peer of mediums, and was a friend of Lazarus. Might it not be possible that Lazarus was an astral projector? There seems to have been some misunderstanding on the part of the disciples as to whether Lazarus was really dead or not. Christ, first of all, told his followers that Lazarus was not dead. This sickness is not unto death. Next, he told them that Lazarus was asleep. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go now that I may awake him from sleep. Christ next went to the grave where Lazarus lay, a cave with a stone upon it. He ordered the stone to be removed and with a loud voice cried, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth could not could not a similar demonstration be given today by a hypnotist and an astral projector another bible instance of resuscitation is the bringing of life of a certain ruler's daughter and he cometh to the house of a ruler of the synagogue and seek the tumult and and them that wept and wailed greatly and when he was come in he said unto them why make ye weep this sorry why make you why make ye this ado and weep the damsel is not dead but sleepeth and they laughed him to scorn but when he had to pull them all out sorry this is a bit this but when he had put them all out he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying and he took the damsel by the hand, and he said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is the interpretation, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, and walked. <clears throat> For these few singular demonstrations, Christ gained the reputation of being capable of re resurrecting the dead. But in every case, Jesus himself stated that the subjects were not dead, but sleeping. If the persons were literally dead, if the line of force had actually been severed and still they were brought back to life, is it not a wonder that more were like more were not likewise revived? Surely there were others begging to be reunited with their loved ones, innocent children crying for their mothers, lovers begging for their sweethearts who lay in death, pathetic, mourners all about, and yet only a few were resurrected. It's interesting. There is much evidence to sustain the belief that those who were restored were still on the astral plane, but it is not necessary to go back to the Bible times to find accounts of those who have been thought dead were, were miraculously, miraculously restored to life. Such things occasionally happen in every generation. Knowing this to be true, at one time in France, bodies of those pronounced dead were first taken to a morgue there to lie under watch for a definite time before burial was permitted. 
Thus, it was hoped to avoid the possibility that any of the victims might be prematurely interred. Not many years ago, in a little Iowa town, funeral services were taking place. The victim lay in state in the church, and as her friends were taking the last view, the last view of the remains, blood was seen oozing from the nose of the corpse. The woman came back to life and lived for many years afterwards. This writer is acquainted with trustworthy trustworthy persons who can swear to the truth of this incident. Excuse me. <clears throat> All of this, of course, relates directly to the astral phenomena. Once the astral cable severs from the physical body, that body is on the road to the dust whence it came. What has been said in the preceding paragraphs regarding projection need not frighten the student who is attempting to develop. The chances that the subconscious will go wrong are insignificant. Severe sickness, in which life is a matter of uncertainty, is, un is usually the cause of such disastrous results and have been de depicted and in this case of projection is brought about involuntarily. It may readily be seen that, although sickness is an incentive toward projection of the astral body, one should not be in too subnormal a condition physically when attempting a prolonged projection. <clears throat> Page 136. The astral cable is akin to the umbilical cord. Now that we have compared projection with death, let us for a moment compare it with birth. Do not the astral body, sorry, do not the astral body and the astral cable afford striking similarities to the newborn physical body and and the umbilical cord and after all which process is the more mysterious? So far as understanding the intelligence behind either of these processes is concerned, they are in the same category. It has always occurred to me as an incons as sorry, I will finish at, after this paragraph. And after all, which process is the more mysterious? So far as understanding the intelligence behind either of these processes is concerned, they are in the same category. It has always occurred to me as an inconsistent for the sceptic to refer to birth as natural and astral projection as supernatural, when he can explain neither. It is merely this. What we call natural is the natural only because we have become familiar with it, for even the natural is often inexplicable. Because he is unfamiliar with the phenomenon of astral projection, the unbeliever scorns the idea on the ground that it is supernatural. Still, physical birth with the body existing at the end of the cord is called natural simply because he is familiar with it, not that it is less mysterious than projection. But such is the way of the human mind. The supernatural undoubtedly does not exist. It is the unfamiliar which is called supernatural. A grain of sand is a mysterious, is as mysterious as a, plan, as a planet a physical body as mysterious as an astral body, the umbilical cord as mysterious as the astral cord. So when we think of that wonderful organism, the astral cord, and wonder at its ability to sustain life, there may be some satisfaction or dissatisfaction in knowing that the astral and umbilical cords are strikingly similar. Uh, there's a little note at the bottom here. One, by aid of a placenta fertilised ovum, is able to form a complete separate new organism in itself, one would think a sufficiently extraordinary fact. Sir Oliver Lodge, Journal, January 1928. So I'll finish on page 137. Um, I will do another one. I just need to have a drink of water. And we'll move on to the next uh, chapter, full chapter, uh, which is chapter 7. Page 138, where the astral's line of force makes contact with the bodies. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will look forward to hearing any feedback that you have. Thank you. Bye.